Good evening, and thanks so much for staying there. This is TV3, and you're watching Agenda. Let me welcome our viewers across the country and beyond. Thanks so much for staying there for the show tonight. My name is Bright Nana Amfo. Now, you can join the show on our social media platforms, on Facebook, on Twitter, but if you want to send us an SMS, 1734, that's the line you can reach us on all uh, network agenda is brought to you by Simbins Furniture. And Simbins Furniture is uh, organizing a special sale. Uh, buy one room furniture and get selected but limited dining rooms. Uh, that will go at 50% off for a living room set. Uh, you get one three-seater, one two-seater, one armchair, one center table, two coffee tables, uh, two table lamps, and then one area rag now a bedroom uh, set comes with the best uh, mattress a beautiful office furniture now also available at simbins uh sorovsky uh, chandeliers a dining room set and so on for quality style and uniqueness see simbins first call simbins on 0244-667790 simbins we say see simbins first now, let's talk about uh, what we're discussing tonight. Now, figures from the Bank of Ghana is indicating that the country's total debt stock now stands at 94.5 billion Ghana cities. Now, this is 70.9% of gross domestic product. According to World Bank uh, parameters, if we were to go by that, if a country's uh, debt to GDP ratio uh, should hit uh, the 70% debt mark, that country uh, can be described as a highly indebted poor country. Uh, now, Ghana's debt, we're told, went up from uh, 89 billion Ghana cities in May 2015 to 95 billion as of June. Now, uh, the Bank of Ghana is suggesting that the increase in the debt is not as a result of continuous borrowing, but uh, the fact that the city hasn't been that uh, strong and its depreciation has contributed to that. Now, HIPIC status would mean that uh, it, will, it will be difficult for the country to uh, settle its debt as well as also meaning that Ghana's uh, 94.5 billion city debt uh, cannot be managed uh, traditionally. Now, the governor of the uh, Bank of Ghana is insisting that Ghana is in a HIPIC country and that uh, uh, HIPIC is simply a conscious effort if the country wants to uh, uh, go that way. And that by crossing the 70.9% uh, mark, we simply cannot say that the country is hippic. Tonight, we'll try and interrogate these issues and see if Ghana is hippic, how do we uh, manage the debt we have? Some recommendations also as to how we can deal with the debt levels that we have. Once again, uh, thanks so much for staying there. My guest tonight, uh, to my extreme left, is uh, an investment consultant, uh, Mr. Sevenamwa. Uh, he is a known face on TV. And then immediate uh, to him, or in the middle, is Dr. Chinibua Senzu. He's the executive director, Bastiat Ghana Institute. Uh, Bastiat Ghana is an, a liberal economic think tank. And then to my immediate uh, left, a known face on business focus, Dr. Bernard Otabel, a financial author and chartered accountant. Gentlemen, welcome to Agenda. Thank you. Let's start from here. Uh, the, the governor of the Bank of Ghana uh, uh, it has simply uh, rubbished the fact that uh, there's a, a public discourse to the fact that uh, Ghana is now a highly indebted poor country because uh, uh, debt to GDP ratio has crossed uh, the 70% mark. We are now about 709 uh, to our GDP. Let me start with uh, Stephen Amwa. You uh, will quickly take this one. The <laughs> governor says going HIPIC is a decision the country would have to, to make or take. But the fact that our, our, our debt has crossed the 70% mark doesn't mean that Ghana is HIPIC. Um, thank you. Um, my regards to our viewers this evening. Mm. 
And I think the way I understand it is that we have a threshold. Great. That's a globally accepted threshold, depending on the percentage of your debt to your GDP. And the percentage is 70%. So as soon as your debt portfolio crosses that, mm. of course, you fall into that classification. But I think acceptance of it will depend on the leadership or the government. For instance, the year 2000, you remember um, our total debt was $7.24 billion. Yeah. And our asset portfolio, the value of our economy, sorry, the, the value of our economy was, I think, $3.94 billion. And debt to GDP was over 100%. I mean, whichever we had crossed the HIPIC mark. Then the leadership then accepted that we're HIPIC. Of course, it's like um, there are signs and symptoms that will indicate that one has malaria. Mm. But you can decide to actually to say that go I don't to have hospital malaria. and say that, okay, um, I'm ready. Do whatever you want to do with me or to me so that I cure my malaria. Somebody can also say, I don't go. I mean, we have herbs. I want to use it. I hope you understand. So I think accepting legally, I don't know whether if you decide not to accept it, there's illegal implication, which I don't think there is. But of course, we have qualified to be happy per the threshold that we have here. The, that's Cross according me. to the, the, the World Bank. That, the threshold. We have crossed that, and that map. Yes, so unless, unless the figures being given to us are not correct. I hope, I hope you understand what I'm saying. But this is what the world classifies as mm. highly indebted poor country. But whether it has to be accepted or not, that one depends on the discretion. So, so you the agree population. with the, the governor of the Bank of Ghana that it, it's, a, it, it's a decision that the country would have to accept that we are HIPIC? Uh, we are because we qualify according to the, the world um, or the global world Exactly. If, if your debt to your GDP crosses the 70% mark, that is what is there now. And that is what we have to acknowledge or appreciate. Probably the leadership, unlike the year 2000, they have an alternative way of, you know, when you have an objective to actually achieve, a goal to achieve, there are many alternatives. So it depends on the one that is actually embarking on the exercise to mm. getting us there. If they are saying they are not going to actually declare the country. Consciously, consciously uh, declare as Ghana as a Probably, I don't know, they have something under their sleeves. I mean, policy-wise, in trying to let Ghana get out of this unpalatable economic situation. So we are yet to know, we are yet to see what they have for us. But so far as the world definition of HIPIC is concerned, and the figures being given to us now, we qualify as a country. Dr. Chinobu, I, I saw the smile on, on your face. Uh, was it because you agree with what uh, uh, Stephen Amway was saying? Yes, you know, he used uh, malaria to be a, 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 a scenario, and mm. I was just buying into it. Yeah, because, you see, something that is generalized, something that is standardized, you can't change it. That is a fact. Because as of now, he used the malaria, I could use a grading point. We know that 80 is A. Mm. When you hit 80 is A, and we know that from 30, you have gotten F. When you hit on that, you have gotten F. So no matter <laughs> other jargons you may use to justify your course, definitely to the external expression possible, the brand created out there, is, that is where you are. So when your result come at the end of the day and the F is stated there, and you think you perform more than F, however, per the result, we look to analyze and mm. make our argument is that you are F. So it's better you go for remarking then we could then classify that you are better or you are not. So for all the expressions being used, we just see it as part of the jargon to just delve yourself out of it. And some people could argue as to part of political um, argument mm. or political persuasion. So that's why I just come uh, uh, Dr. Bernardo Tabe, so uh, uh, Stephen and Dr. Chinebua mm -hmm. agrees that we have crossed the mark. Again, the, the Stephen is talking about malaria. Dr. Chinebua will want to use a grading system in our investors, I guess the universities. The governor says we need to make a, take a conscious decision that the country is hippic before we can accept that we're hippic. We should listen to him. We should definitely listen to him, right? Um, and again, I think that I would, you know, differ quite slightly, mm. you know, from what my two um, other panelists have <coughs> said. I mean, 
the issue is not as simple as having malaria or having the typhoid or having any kind of disease that you're trying to conceal or try not to accept it. It's not a case of being in denial. And I can give a clear example. You know, he tried to draw a pearl. I mean, um, um, Mr. Amwa tried to draw some pearl between what we are experiencing now and mm. what existed in 2000. The dynamics are not the same. Now, we can use debt to GDP ratio crossing the 70% mark and 70.9 and so on and so forth. Fantastic. It's a well known fact. And mm. indeed, the economic manager themselves have come up with these figures. Now, let me use the um, finance minister of Greece, you know, Yanis Varoufakis, uh, you know, when in March 2000, um, March 2013, I mean, two clear years before he became the finance minister of Greece, he had this opportunity to be the head of the OECD. And he said quite something quite profound. He said that, look, there is nothing like debt crisis. <coughs> now, why Sorry, did he say like debt crisis? Debt, debt debt crisis. crisis. Okay. And he said this you know, in order <coughs> to pinpoint the fact that, yes, you may have a situation of debt crisis as you would want to see it. Mm. But then there are other factors that would need to be considered before you can really classify yourself as being you know, indebted to the extent that you can pay your debt. Now, then again, also, the other correction that I would like to make right is that the Governor Bank of Ghana never said that, indeed, we should just push everything under the carpet and just say that there's nothing happening. No, he didn't he say that. He actually said that, indeed, we haven't reached that situation that can be classified as, as a very dangerous situation. Now, if someone says not very dangerous, it means that there is some level of danger. But... And you got to consider the other factors. That indeed we may have debt to GDP ratio of 70.9%, fantastic. But it doesn't mean that it's not sustainable. It is something that can be managed, and therefore for what we have put in place, we will be able to manage that. Mm. Now, if you look at the surprising aspect of what happened on that particular day, what happened? We have a 100 basis point increase in our primary, in the policy rate, you know, and that was very much un unsuspected. <laughs> Now, if you look at what you know, took place on, on, you know, at the time, and you just oppose it with what <coughs> is happening globally, you can really say, look, in the global economy, whereas most people are going for quantitative easing, we have a different problem. Mm. Our problem is excess liquidity. And therefore, if we look at the inflation targeting approach of what we are doing, therefore, there's a need for us to put in the policies that would make sure that we are doing the right balancing mm. to ensure that, indeed, we get to where we want to be. Whereas we may be experienced <coughs> very strong headwinds, there are so very you know, good and comfortable tailwinds which will help us to comfortably you know, sail through this economic situation in which we find ourselves in. So you, 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 you <laughs> think that where we are, uh, we, we could be uh, crossing the 70% mark, but you, you, you seem to see some light at the end of, 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 of the tunnel. You see, not too long ago, I mean, some time passed, a group of economic students actually went on demonstration in France. What were they protesting? Their argument was simple, that the use of mathematical models in economic <coughs> analysis mm. is really creating what they call the autistic science, which means that it is out of touch with reality. Now, if you're using only GDP as a measure, I mean, the level of output calculated in market price is fantastic. But there are other measures that are not introduced there. We are not Professor Dickerson or Samuelson or whatever for us to be challenging that. Mm. What we are looking at is, did when we are looking at these factors, do not take it as a case of a marked kind of script and therefore I have a 70% mark, I've crossed it quickly, I am happy. You can't really be classified yourself as that. And indeed, if you look at the, what really came to be called EPIC, you know, I have a very nice story around that. But right, we need to get a program, of course. We'll, we'll, so let's, let's, we'll, let's get we'll, that. We'll get to your story later. Yes. But <laughs> Dr. Chedibua, so it, we, we are, uh, Dr. Otabel is suggesting that uh, we are, we, we've gone past the 70 mark. But then it does not mean that we are deep in the danger. Um, as he also started from his uh, accession, he mm. indicated he may differ slightly. Mm. I will also quietly also differ slightly. With, with him? It, with him oh, also great. at some point. Yeah. That's yes. it. Yes. Um, uh, you see, looking within our economy and managing the various factors that are involved, we can see, I always call our economy more of a fragile in nature. Let us now start analyzing certain factors that we are seeing, whether the poverty level we are looking at, the ordinary people, the nature of how our economy managed from the top is affecting the, the grassroots. We are seeing more businesses collapsing. We are seeing the poverty gap. I, I, I keep hearing this statement, businesses collapsing, but I, I don't have figures. <laughs> and so when it is mentioned, I, I, I get a bit confused myself. How many have, have collapsed in 2015? You see, roughly, I could also quantify by giving you a exact figure. Mm. <laughs> I could not quantify by giving you a exact figure. Mm. But roughly, we could also tell you that in reality, 
as he used that at a certain point, economics based on mathematics is just becoming more of an abstract. We're also then going more into a classroom, especially we by Ghana believe more of practical application of economic indices. Mm. Let us see how it affects the economy. Most of the time we are speaking, we want to watch the picture from what happens to the practical economic environment, not only by the theory we are projecting. Are you suggesting that the, the practical environment, yes. the economy, shows the country is epic? Yes, the practical environment is already defining where we are now. So when you see many people making an argument as where we are now, it's also considering the situation on the ground. Tell me, let, let, let's talk about th that, that practicality you're talking about. What, what are these signs that you, you see? First, when you go to the grassroots, you will realize that getting access to capital for productivity has mm. now become more challenged. Why? Because, you see, when you work on our economic analysis, government doing more borrowing. When you does more borrowing, especially from the standard market, somebody will say that government borrowing more could have support the domestic businesses because it's going to invest in infrastructure and therefore has to reflect on the domestic market mm. and people easily have access to the money through the banks and do the businesses. But in the nature of our economy, when borrowing are being made, how many of the local businesses have the capacity to handle some of these infrastructure projects that are around? So you see more of the time, the external companies are the ones that are doing it long. So the money that are being borrowed is again drifted into another economy. So you see your grassroots that you, the market is still contracting. And when you have the market continue contracting, you realize that accessing to fund to do any productivity becomes difficult. <coughs> so measuring the time, which is the effort somebody used per hour to do any kind of productive result, now has to be doubled before he get the same thing at a certain point because you see your market contracting. And these are some of the factors we are reading from the practical ground. Now I'm giving you from the practical angle because from our ground where we come from, we look more of our labor productivity. Mm. Now there is an issue whereby we are using the currency as a situation of due to it uh, uh, depreciation is actually being the factor making the, the, the cost of our borrowing becoming more huge. Now let's consider even our currency per se. Do we have the necessary tools to continue making the currency be able to appreciate and be more into a sustainable appreciation? We don't seem to have it. Why? Because if you want to strengthen your currency, always has to stand on the power of your exporting. And do we have that productive capacity? We are the, not exporting more. And so the certainly we, we, that, that is the point, the labor market. So you could see the most of our works, which are more designed, become much more so on the paper documentation. We don't have the productive power to do it. So at the end of the day, when there is that idea, we want to increase our, um, we want to make sure that we do anything to appreciate our currency level so that that particular amount is able to be stabilized or seen as, you know, the question you ask yourself is, what are the means are they using to be able to engineer and get that achieved. I, I, I'll get us to the point where, of course, we'll, we'll have to make recommendations as to how uh, the Bank of Ghana can deal with this. But le let me bring uh, Mr. Sevnamwa in. I, 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 I saw you <coughs> clearing your throat more than uh, twice <laughs> when <laughs> Dr. Tabel and Dr. Tumba were talking, uh, suggesting that uh, there were a few things that you, you did not agree with. But uh, Dr. Tabel's uh, uh, case is that we, we might have gotten to we, we might have gotten the malaria, but it doesn't mean that it's going to kill us. Um, right. Um, just as he didn't agree to some of the things we mm. said, I think the same way. And he was trying to say that probably um, the, there is an attempt to uh, fix in the situation or to fix the situation. And he even quoted the prime rate getting to 25% probably as part of the measures. Mm. And I think... He also said that um, the Bank of Ghana governor did not actually come out to rubbish this statement. But your synopsis that I have here, mm -hmm. I want to read an extract from that. Mm -hmm. It says that governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Henry Wampa, has rubbished the reports that the country has officially been classified a highly indebted poor country. That's what he said. And he said, according to him, despite Ghana's public debt reaching an all-time high, it does not mean the country is HIPIC. He said HIPIC is a conscious decision by a country and not just an assertion. And then he went further to say how they're going to solve the problem, the attempt that they are trying to make. Government has launched a debt restructuring strategy which focuses on the issuance of more 
long-term securities, mostly of five and seven year maturities. It plans to issue a fourth euro bond of up to $1.5 billion this month to fund spending and refinance part of the debt. So according to what my brother said, and in addition to what the government is trying to do, mm. uh, the government itself has said, I mean, the steps they are taking, first, the prime rate, second, raising bond. And, and the first thing, I'll tackle what the government is saying. Um, you cannot rob it to people. <laughs> because if you raise bond, you're definitely going to pay with interest. That is one thing you should know. And two, if you want to use prime rate, even the decision by the Bank of Ghana, the Monetary Policy Committee, to increase policy rate to 25, it is a policy drift. It is wrong. Hey, well, I'll, 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 I'll get us to talk about that. He used that. I want to, I want to, I want to just that. give a preamble on mm. that so that I'm, when we get to its issue, when you're having inflationary rate being caused by cost push, not demand push, not like people have money yeah. and they are buying so much on the market, yeah. and as a result, we are getting close to probably full employment, then you can increase your interest rate, lift your monetary policy up. But if I can't remember when it was 21 and we were moving into 22. Bank of Ghana, they were interviewed, your station, and they called me, and I said, the situation is going to get worse. And he argued, six weeks later, it moved from 17.1 to 17.9, you remember? Yeah. Because what is happening now is as a result, maybe we do detail discussion, but it's as a result of cost of importation, mm. I mean, imported goods, and then cost of raw materials and operating cost. And these are from the supplies end. Yeah. So you cannot increase it and thinking you, you can restore or bring back inflation and cause the economy to get stabilized. In any way, all the decisions being taken by all governments, whether in this or MPP or whichever government, is to ensure that as a country, we get long-term economic growth and stability, even the debt situation, everything. But before you get these two things, labor, uh, uh, productivity, uh, labor force and productivity, Perfect. and these are very key. So every decision that you are taking, you need to ask yourself, in terms of skill component of your labor, in terms of the size of the labor, in terms of productivity, are you going to get that result? And this is where the problem is. So if we are talking about it, one thing I've seen about this particularly, they are using the exchange rate and stuff like that. If you are considering the long-term costs of our currency, you cannot blame one regime. I think as a country, we haven't done well. Because a country that we are endowed so much with raw materials, uh, in terms of human development index. Look at the panel members you have, doctor, doctor, masters. You understand what I'm saying? Look at us. All of us are very good. We have thousands or hundreds of food that are better than us in Ghana. So if you have the human resource, you have the raw material, how come that we cannot industrialize our country and ensure that mm. preference for goods and services in our country are not given to foreign issue, foreign goods and services that of the same liquidity and risk factors. And these are the major, but of course, the severity of what is happening today to our currency. I mean, I don't want to go in there. I want us to be very professional. Ghana here, if you go in there, they will say we are doing politics. <laughs> there are a lot of issues. But all that we are saying is that the most important factor is that the debt situation today, he mm. quoted somebody. I'm sure if we have had the chance to read the entire text or comprehension of what he the person said. the Greek said, finance. Exactly. We would have understood that probably the person was talking about the fact that you cannot just look at the debt portfolio alone. Mm. I understand something because every financial statement, it is the ratio of your debt to your Great. asset mm. that will let you know whether you are entering into a zone of financial crisis or debt oh, crisis. No. They wouldn't have said Greek. Right. Do you remember Greek? The so world <laughs> described let, Greek let as take having a first break. debt crisis. The whole world. Let, let me take so a first break. I, I'll come back. Us. I'll get you the chance to talk. But uh, I think when we come back, we'll try and move the discussions on to uh, see if we agree that there is a, a, a debt problem. Uh, perhaps some others argue that it has not got into the crisis level yet. But the agreement, I, I, I suggest, uh, I agree uh, amongst us is that there is a, a debt problem. Uh, we'll try and see if uh, the debt that we have, we can uh, uh, manage it, sustain it uh, to a level that uh, will keep the economy running. But you can join this discussion on uh, 1734 odd networks, uh, 1734, uh, stay there and uh, get your comments, uh, views, opinions to us and read them to our viewers. Don't forget Agenda is brought to you by Simbin's Furniture. Uh, call them on 0244-667790. Agenda is returning shortly.
back to what was stated. The discussions uh, uh, weren't going whilst uh, you were out of it. But my guests are still here, Dr. Bernard Otabel, uh, Dr. Chinebua Senzu, and then Mr. Stephen Amwe. Let me start uh, with uh, Dr. Bernard Otabel. Now, of course, you seem to have uh, <laughs> two against uh, you. But uh, the, the general acceptance is that there's a debt problem. Very well. Mm. You know, the general acceptance that there's a debt, you know, situation, mm. um, which, you know, actually needs resolving. That's, that's, you know, an established, you know, position. But then, if you listen to the, my other panelists, mm. I mean, they are quite strong on the fact that, yes, we've hit a situation whereby um, we might not be able to find ourselves out of it. And therefore, probably the best way out is to declare ourselves highly indebted and poor and probably call for help. Now, there has never been any time that the government has not admitted to challenges within the economy. Mm. Indeed, if anyone wanted any proof of it, then just don't look you know, any further. Look at the IMF situation mm. and what the IMF is currently doing in the country. If indeed all was well, why would we have to go for a bailout from the International Monetary you know, Fund and so on and so forth? But then, you know, I would always want us to look at it from the point of view as to what exactly is the global situation. Today we talk about global growth with over 3%. Now why are we talking about 3% global growth with and what was it before? Now between the period of 2000 and 2007, global growth rate averaged more than 4, 5, 6%. Now we experience a situation of 3% and by the admission of the OECD itself, it will take us 23 years for us to double global growth rate as we have it now. From a previously rate of 17.5%, that tells you something. Now let's look at the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, and China. Mm. Brazil is coming out of a recession. We started way, um, in the beginning of 2014, and they are now trying to come out of it. Russia is experiencing economic slowdown simply because of the fall in oil prices globally. India and China are one of the fastest growing economies in the world today, but yet the economic growth in China has actually accelerated. Now if you look at the various growth rates in all over the world, you cannot now say that all the global economies are doing poorly, and Ghana, the superstar, must it be, should doing, be so doing well. well. You wouldn't really look at it from that point of view. Now, he spoke about the, you know, the Bastion group. We're talking about liberal economics and so on and so forth. Fantastic. We all want economics for the common good. That is, economic that is devout of trying to pervert knowledge in a way that makes statistics look good. But then the reality is that the people on the ground are struggling. I hate that, eat, uh, you know, as well. Mm. So the issue is not about whether the debt has actually come about or not. It has happened. Mm. The issue is that what kind of confidence can we build around the situation in which we find ourselves in order to come out of it? Does it mean that going here, we must close shop and go home? It hasn't happened that way. All countries are coming through a lot of situations. Indeed, I remember George Osborne had the Conservative Party in a conference at one point. When Labour was making so much noise, he threw the gunplay to them. This is the economic situation in which we find ourselves. British, Britain is experiencing a growth rate that is quite unprecedented. This and that is what I am going to do to the extent that I really want to cut the, cut the NHI, NHIs. He told Labour, come up with other policies. They had nothing more to say. We got to stand up to the test of time mm. and really say that indeed we have hit a situation that we really need to find all hands on deck and get the situation resolved. We may throw our hands in despair, but it doesn't solve the situation. The situation in which we find ourselves, 25% policy rate is going to affect uh, the level of borrowing. He spoke about productivity and so on and so forth. Productivity has its, you know, there's so much here about productivity, I don't want to really go into that area mm. because it's got nothing linked to what we are trying to discuss. The debt situation is real. It's something that calls for all of us to get, you know, more into it and find ways of addressing it. And, 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 now, and, and can we sustain it? Well, it's not about sustainability. Mm. We've got to look at the medium-term plan that has currently been put in place by the, you know, um, the economic managers. In the past, we had not put in place a system that seeks to address how we pay back our debts when they mature. Mm. Thankfully, today, there's so much talk about creation of a sinking fund that would even ensure that at the end of the period, there is a fund that is built that we don't need to now go and find more money in order to pay off our debts, but the single fund that is accumulated money that would help us to pay our debts when they mature. That is a classic case of trying to address the issue of robbing Peter to pay Paul. Mm. So indeed, some of the issues that we are really looking at are being looked at in a, more, in a, in a much more different way, probably not classified in the way that we would expect it to be. Mm. But let's not pervert knowledge. Dr. The Otago things thinks, are really uh, we, 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 There is uh, some uh, hope after all. Dr. Chiribua, so 
it, it, we cannot discuss Ghana's uh, uh, challenges uh, without looking at what is happening globally. Ghana is a unique country of itself. And I sometimes get much more worried when most of the time our situation has to always be compared to the negative challenges of the others. Why are we also not comparing ourselves to the positive factors of the other countries? <laughs> we have gotten to a point which, to me, I understand that our way we reconcile in terms of our uh, financial economics to that of the labor economics is very difficult. We don't seem to, what I call, intersect them effectively to generate productivity. There is that gap. Most of the time, I see the classical economics more focused on seeing financial economic or capital market to be superior in controlling the whole market. And when you continue to be <coughs> moving in that direction, your economy will be detected by other economics that are stand, standing. So your economy become more fragile. So anytime they, are, they have economic shakes, and that is what you see, anytime we are quoting, per the nature of our economy has been engineered, we talk us to then compare ourselves to certain parameters from our side to define by looking at the resource that is coming from us. Looking at what we do, you think that if productive, uh, productivity has been very efficient, don't we think that we would have had a very strong economy that is independent of itself? D despite uh, the international difficulty, the global difficulty? Because you as, also believe I, that we could as, 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 he, as he has yeah, made a comparison, no, as we have made the comparison, as he has made a comparison using Greek and those things, have you also gone back to Dubai? Counting from that area, they, the time that we have the oil crisis and people are struggling, they had a way to mitigate their way out to Sorry. be able to engineer their local economy to stand that test. And they are really having a very good economic environment as of now. So that is why I'm also coming at what can we also do? We should always anticipate the challenges are going to come. Why is it that when America is to begin to cry, then we are dead? Then what about when our economy begins to cry? They are not dead. They are standing. What makes that disparity? This is where we are getting to. We have what it takes, but the challenge is that there is that gap. We don't have the strong reconciliation of the labor, and that is why he said he did not want to you, reconcile you, with uh, that. Dr. Chinuba, so you don't even believe in the fact that what the economic managers are doing now, as far as trying to deal with the debt situation, is not something that will work? It's it not something to me that will Going work. Why, why? Because, listen, I have been one of the people that argue that you look as if the present economic managers are doing much more of management thinking than economic <coughs> thinking. Because, you see, the work of an economist is to think how resources can be used efficiently to productivity. It's not how resources are used for productivity. So whereby we are not seeing the best calculation to mitigate our way to address the challenges, then you do, we don't call ourselves more of doing our economic work correctly. And as he used one word, which I'm very happy about it, that where our um, um, central bank um, um, director, that is Dr. Wampa, quoting certain figures, we need to do everything to support him. I am making it very clear. There are so many promises they have made. Why are some people beginning to argue?